it almost sounds like you, you almost more in like winemaking and it were like, you know, you, you're not just set and forget it's, it's you, you, you're involved the whole time. You, every step of the way you you quality control and yeah, it's, it's a massive feat. And I was just wondering in terms of the, uh, the preservatives, if you can make food without preservatives, right? Um, like you guys are doing, why yes. is it so prevalent? It, does it, does it lengthen like the time that you can have it on the shelf or, or what is the actual yeah. purpose of it? Totally. So, so, okay. So our food is all frozen. So just, just to, to clarify as well, our food all comes frozen. So, so we're a frozen food brand because if you're going to have no preservatives, you're going to have to sort of preserve that food somehow. Now, mm is by far the best way to preserve things. I mean, like you see how they pull out woolly mammoths out of, out of the uh, ground, you know, in snow, I've been frozen for like many, 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 many years. Um, and um, freezing is, 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 is nature's most sort of efficient way of, of sort of like storing things. But now the, the way to achieve the quantity there is actually fast freezing, so blast freezing. So we can get them down to like low temperatures within literally sort of minutes, you know, sometimes. So that's the whole thing. Now, why the others are using a lot of preservatives um, is like for two reasons. One is obviously to preserve the, the uh, shelf life, so you get your food. I want it to last, it's got to last like for instance, 12 months or it's got to last so many months, I mean, because they will freeze it sometimes as well with preservatives. Or mm -hmm. it's a product, it's got to go on the shelves. Or you'll have a jam or a sauce where you know preservatives in the sauce because the preservatives will keep it um, fresh and looking bright and clean and, and colorful without mm -hmm. anything. You know, um, it'll, it'll sit on the shelf, it'll look nice. Um, but the problem actually is also when you open it up, you take a spoon and you take that spoon and you take a lick and you put the spoon back into the actual, um, you know, sort of sauce, that goes to live and it goes back in there. So preservatives do have a role to play in that there. Um, yeah. And I think that there probably is a good time to, to use them. I mean, I, originally I was like, no preservatives at all, never ever have preservatives. But I, now I'm like in a case, okay, like for our brand, we will never use preservatives. But I think that there are times in life where you need something to be. And, and like also, so don't be an idiot about them saying it's ban everything. I think how do you use them sort of in a in a in a in a more logical and um, yeah, clever way? Like for instance, okay, so there's a thing called the law of Paracelsus. So there's a guy, the father of toxicology, Paracelsus, he came up with a, a, a rule many years back, and he said um, it's the dose that matters. So basically, mm -hmm. so he's saying is that like everything is poisonous. It's the dose that matters. So literally. If you have too much water, it can become dangerous for you. If you have too much oxygen, it becomes dangerous for you. Whatever you have in life, um, it becomes dangerous. Now, the thing with, with preservatives, are preservatives bad for you in small doses? I probably say tested and, and probably they're completely fine for you in small doses. The issue is everyone uses the preservatives and the additives, the colorants and the flavorants nowadays. You have got no more control over sort of how much of those um, additives and preservatives you're getting. So if the law is that everything is poisonous, it's the dose that matters, but you can't control the dose of something that you're getting, then actually mm -hmm. sort of like say abstain. I, I want to control my life. I want to control my quality of my food. And it's all about quality. Let's leave the preservatives out. And like once in a while when I do have them or I'm drinking water and there's preservatives or I put face cream on my face and there's something in there that does something, mm -hmm. I'd rather be a bit stricter. So in the modern world, I think we need a yeah. So, so, so preservatives, have their place, I would say, but but they're overused. They are absolutely abused mm -hmm. by the, the um, commercial food industries. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. So, so while we're talking about it, like people don't necessarily know how bad certain foods are and, and things are uh, in, within the food and that kind of thing. So maybe you can just give us some sort of an indication, uh, maybe without totally scaring us, um, if that's possible. <laughs> well, I mean, if, so for instance, like one of the big things I'm really sort of like. Um, watching at the moment is your, your gut biome. And I won't go into the gut biome now, but just to mention, so we all know that your gut is really important. The, the bacteria that live in your gut basins that run your whole body. I mean, the reason you digest and the reason a lot of your body functions work is because of all these bacteria that live in your mouth, on your skin, in any sort of like crevice you've got in your body, there is bacteria that is very, very, very um, beneficial. A real sort of symbiotic relationship. Now, if your gut bacteria is out, uh, we're seeing links to everything from autism, autoimmune diseases, um, uh, I mean, cancers, migraines, um, everything. I mean, everything out there. You know, Alzheimer's, the whole duty. Um, now, the problem is, like, we've been told, for instance, like, like something as simple as, like, the whole movement to say, no sugar added. Or, and what they do is, 
they, they then go and add three types of artificial sugars. Now, in a lab, when they want to, when they want to shut down your um, microbiome in your stomach, they want to flatten your bacteria in, in your gut, they are literally using, um, um, with, with rats and with other things as well, they are using um, artificial sugars. Huh. Shut down and, and damage your gut bacteria so they can reset you and see how you react. Now, this is something we told about, you know, by everyone. It's totally fine to use, you know, the xylitols and the whatever else, um, the erythritols, sucralose, and all those things. It's not <laughs> because actually uh, the damage that it's causing, we, we are not, we, we cannot think in terms of, you know, proteins, carbs, sugars, and fiber anymore and fats. You know, you've got to think like food is not just like, those little, you know, four or five little things and a, and a bit of vitamins and minerals. I mean, that's getting mm. deep. You're looking at sort of like, like code. There's code. There's, I mean, you've got toxins in there. You've got things that, things in there that can make you sort of like completely high. There's things in food that obviously we know make you high. There's food that make you low. There's foods that affect your emotions. Food is code into your body. And the reason is it's affecting your gut biome. So even something as simple as it's okay to use artificial sugars because sugar is worse for you. When they found that, when they done tests um, for um, 11 days, they did tests at two different groups, one group with um, normal sugar added uh, uh, and one group with, with all the artificial sugars, they found the group with the artificial sugars had much higher blood sugar than the other groups. So, you know, mm. you just can't trust what's going on, I believe. Yes, You've got to back to nature. Yeah, yeah, nature. Yeah, yeah, it's super scary, man. Like, you know, and, and like you said, the, the issue is, is that it's in everything that's that's the actual problem you know so you 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 can't avoid it well you know you can totally avoid it but like you know people want the kind of ease of just kind of buying you know buying stuff and then making their life as easy as possible to cook and whatnot and and when you do that it's in everything so there's no there's no like rest from these things you're constantly mm. putting your body like you know this stuff in your body and and that's the issue you know so yeah. um yeah i mean you know you like like you're only finding out 20 years later or whatever that this was the cause I mean, yeah. like you know i mean uh oh, that's ridiculous you know so i'd rather just, just trust trust nature like don't be a hippie but trust nature <laughs> yeah yeah no totally but totally man and um like tell us maybe about some of the success stories that you've had with fitchev because there's been some incredible oh. you know changes in moments yeah so so actually um i mean we've had just on a staff level, I mean, like, you know, you, so originally we, you know, we, we grew incredibly fast. I mean, like, you know, like the first three years, we just doubled in size. And every day you needed a bigger, more trucks, more, more staff, more people. And we, we kind of just said, like, if you could start work tomorrow and you were available and you could work a computer, just, just arrive and we'll hire you. So we had a lot of people <laughs> who, were, who were pretty sort of like overweight and um, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, autoimmune diseases and, and, and issues. So we had staff arriving and literally losing 40 kilograms. They, they come on board. Um, it really felt like I remember sort of dealing with some of them thinking, my goodness, these people are not conscious at all. They're, they're, they're just like, they arrived at work, they're super overweight, very unhappy, um, autoimmune diseases for the last like 30 years kind of in their lives. And the, they come on board, drop those 40 kilograms. I would see this massive change happening in their consciousness. I should have worried about some of them at one point, although like, I've seen such a massive change in their thinking style. I'm actually worried about sort of how they communicate with their existing friends and the existing mm -hmm. family because, or their circles, because I mean, there's been such a mental change. Then the physical change, I mean, you know, we have people who, who had, um, I mean, horrific autoimmune diseases. Our, our one PR agent had, um, she had lupus, 22 years living on like literally a handful of tablets every morning. Uh, she's on our food. Uh, for um, three months, also did a bit of work um, emotionally as well, and literally uh, in three separate um, tests, the doctor was like, "I've never seen this before. Where has the lupus gone? Like, I have not seen this. It must be a broken test." Sent her again, have another test, and eventually said, "Okay, something's wrong with this lab. I'll send you to another lab." And there was no signs of lupus, and and, and we get this all. The time. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour, and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy cape fold, mountain range, gotta be quick so